they had kind of a hierarchy and at least a leadership that Korolev and another guy named Glushko were kind of viewed as the, in, the, in, the engineering leaders of the group. And, and they actually learned to work together and, and start to kind of build some rocketry things. And this goes all the way back now to the 30s. Then, then you got World War II comes along and, and these guys end up um, actually sent to Germany to dig up German rocket technology. Now, um, the thing is the Soviet leadership wasn't really very interested in German rocket technology. They were interested in everything German, right? They literally moved the entirety of, of German, East German industry to the Soviet Union on literally thousands and thousands of trains. And of those thousands and thousands of trains, exactly one, 180 rail cars, was consisted of uh, German rocket rocket scientists and things like that, and in fact, um, there was kind of there wasn't a great deal of interest on the part of the leadership. In in fact, during the latter days of World War II, Churchill was pushing Stalin to um, to launch an assault on Penamunde, where the Germans were launching the V twos on London, and and Stalin ignored him. Hmm. For good reason. He was going to Berlin yeah. and he didn't want to divert the troops. Um, when, you know, when it was clear and that then the Soviets had, had all but marched on and taken control of Berlin, even then Stalin showed very little interest in rocketry. There was some, but no one was really upset that the Americans got all the rocket scientists. And of course, right. the last place that the German rocket scientists wanted to go was Russia, hmm. right? Right. You know, there's a famous quote, I think it was, it wasn't from Von Braun, it was from, it was Von Braun's brother, who said, you know, we were scared to death of the Soviets, the French really couldn't do anything, and, and the English didn't have enough money, so the only place for us to go was the Americans, and so literally, you know, Von Braun and his rocket team found the Americans and said, we surrender to you, um, and so whatever efforts the, the Soviets made, and there's some great stories here, they actually made them with, a, I would say, um, gr a grudging approval, but certainly not endorsement. In fact, they sort of snuck behind the lines and picked up whatever they could. And they ended up getting a few sci German scientists, but it wasn't really clear that there was support. Nevertheless, Korolev and his team gathered up some German scientists, brought them back, rebuilt some, they, they managed to rebuild some, some A4 rockets, the V2. Um, the Germans kind of helped them figure out how to build it. And then, um, this is kind of another interesting piece of it, then Korolev did, I think, a very brilliant job of in a, a, a technical review of the German program. Korolev managed to shoot down everything that they were doing and, and basically discredit their ideas, get the Germans thrown out. And, and so now, now Korolev's biggest competitor, right, had been discredited and sent out. So, you know, he was sort of on his way to creating his team then. So there's some politics here to be played. Well, it's all politics. Yeah. Wow. Right? right. I mean, Who gets the resources and the direction? Yeah. Well, but that's not, I, I mean, that's not different. Mm -hmm. Than over. Right, over from any America other country. As well. Right. Oh, yeah, mean, the Americans had Operation Paperclip, which allowed them to let uh, the the former German scientists into the country and then rehab them for about ten years, so their reputation was all right. And then they could take von Braun and, and well, and we didn't do a whole lot with them right. initially, right? We got them all, and we threw them, mm -hmm. sent them out to New Mexico, yeah. and kind of didn't do anything with them because we didn't. Nevertheless, but I mean, the point is that you know if. Um, Every entrepreneur deals with an, an environment where they need to get resources from someone else, unless, of course, you're Jeff Bezos, in which case, you know, your, your pitch deck is pretty easy, mm -hmm. right? Um, you just, you're pitching to yourself. But um, so, um, yeah, it's not, it's not that different. I mean, to be sure that the relationship with leadership and, and the engineers 
is um, is different in the Soviet Union in the sense that, you know, if if you get in trouble with someone, it's not that you just get defunded, you get shot, right? right or become a non-person or something like that, you know. And for those who don't really know much about history of that, I go, really, could the purges have been that bad? I recommend you go read this book. It's called Bloodlands. It's by a Yale historian named Timothy Snyder. And it's terrifying. Um, all these wipeouts of populations as Stalin is getting rid of the peasants and pushing them into the cities and wasting food and there's famine. It's just terrible. And you get these stories of, uh, of Soviet generals being sent to concentration camps. And there's one very famous Soviet general who got his teeth knocked out and then the war started and they went, oh, we need this guy. So they brought him back had a little stopover in Moscow so we could get metal teeth reinstalled like Jaws from the 007 movies and then sent back out there to fight. I mean, it's, it's really some terrifying stuff going on here. So, yeah, so, so this is not a case of the marketplace determining much, right? This is, this is politics. This is what are we going to do with the resources and, and direction in that. And so this one fellow who, uh, who's, who's come out from Siberia, you said, uh, to, right. to advocate for this and get involved in that. I am curious how he chose this particular field and got involved in, in this part of the bureaucracy. Um, did they have much choice? Was he allowed to say, I want to do this, or did he get assigned? No, 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 no. I mean, you know, as I said, Korolev was a rocket enthusiast, a space yeah. cadet from the 1930s. Mm -hmm. This was what he wanted to do. No, the, they let the you leaders, he got, he got the leadership to make a decision to approve going ahead okay. with a missile program. Mm -hmm. But even then, it, it was far from you know, a case where the, the leadership was throwing a huge amount of resources at it. In mm -hmm. fact, you know, with the original decision um, by Stalin in 46, um, Korolev was only like a department head in a small laboratory in a mm -hmm. bigger institute. It wasn't okay. like he was put in charge of a huge program. Mm -hmm. So, um, no, he picked what he wanted to do. He was pushing the program that he wanted and leadership support was lukewarm at best. I mean, there, there are lots of times where Korolev or, or one of his um, deputies, particularly brilliant guy named Deacon Ravov, would pitch ideas and people would say, you really must have, you must have too much free time on your hands. <laughs> and, and times where... Korolev's rockets would be um, uh, denied admission into service because, for example, you know, the rocket was one millimeter out of spec. Hmm. And so they, it wasn't like the leadership was anxious to promote rocketry. It was, I mean, I don't think they could make a, I don't think they could make an artillery shell that was within one meter <laughs> that one meter millimeter tolerances i'm, I'm kind of kidding um huh. but yeah it was not a program which had um Korolev was very adept at getting the decisions that he needed he was very adept at at building relationships with his um immediate customers if you will mm -hmm. his customers right. in the military because in, in the soviet system there's the Ministry of Defense, which is a uniform mm -hmm. military, and then the Ministries of Industry. And mm -hmm. it's not unlike the US system, which you got a military customer and, and an industrial supplier, except that the industrial supplier doesn't rely on the military for his money. Mm -hmm. The military does not control their money. They simply approve mm -hmm. Congress. development right. of something with someone else's money. And so once the decision to fund an institute is made, the question for the military is just which one of their projects are you going to approve? Huh. Okay. So. And, and I think something I, that, that really clarifies things for us. Thank you. More engineers are not going to solve your problem. It's not a technical problem in that sense. It's a process problem. And the time to fix your processes was 20 months ago. And the second best time is today. This is Jason Kanigan, the president of Cold Star Technologies and the host of this podcast, The Cold Star Project, which is all about identifying and solving process problems for space companies, because that's what we do. And you can hear the entirety of this episode by following the link in the comment below.